Welcome to this episode of the BCN and Friends podcast. We're excited to have with us today, Dr. Kate Hickson. Dr. Hickson is an expert on what makes for extraordinary performance. Our hosts today are Bridget Flood, Director of Strategy and Operations for the BCN, and Janie Shoemaker, Executive Director of the BCN. Bridget and Janie, take it away. Hello, and welcome to the BCN and Friends podcast. I'm Bridget Flood, Director of Strategy and Operations here at BCN, and I'm joined by my co-host, Janie Shoemaker, who's the Executive Director. Hey, Janie. Hey, Bridget. Um, So today, we have a really good episode. Um, And as you know, the BCN and Friends podcast is an opportunity for us to have interesting conversations about learning with a wide range of thought leaders, BCN certification holders, and industry professionals. And most importantly, to create value and insight for our professional nurses across the emergency spectrum. So we hope you find our discussions interesting, informative, sometimes funny, sometimes serious, but always valuable. Jamie and I are so excited to have with us today, Dr. Kate Hickson. Kate has earned her PhD studying team-based training concepts at NASA for the training of astronauts for deep space missions. Kate has also uh, worked in the ed tech industry, founded a bespoke furniture company with her husband, James, a mom to her daughter, Lila, and has recently launched katehickson.com, where she shares her research and insights about what drives extraordinary performance through a series of stories and narratives. Kate, welcome. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me today. Oh, we're, we are thrilled. And I think where I'd like to get started is, you know, I, I, hopefully my introduction did right by you, but I would love if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and about your journey from studying the astronauts, which intrigues me, um, to your entrepreneurship and the launch of katehexon.com um, and being fascinated by the extraordinary. So if we could start there, that would be great. Absolutely, my pleasure. So, and yes, your intro was perfect. It absolutely synthesized and summarized what I've been up to. Uh, so I guess to give just a little bit more color you know, as you were mentioning, so during my PhD, I was fortunate enough to be awarded a pre-doctoral research fellowship from NASA. So I was able to spend summers down there at Johnson Space Center. And so let me ask you guys real quick, when you think of Johnson Space Center, what's the first thing that pops in your head? <laughs> I'm going to say just cool. <laughs> um, yeah, me, me too. I'm going to say that sounds absolutely amazing, like a once in a lifetime opportunity sounds fabulous. Oh, uh, yes, well, <laughs> thank you. And, and you're right, it definitely was a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I learned so much while I was down there. So I was working on my dissertation. And as you mentioned, really focusing on team-based training for astronauts going, so we mentioned all the way to Mars. So pretty, uh, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, so what I ended up developing was a virtual teamwork training model And I was so excited because it received excellent feedback throughout all all of my rounds of testing from members of the astronaut training selection committee and members of the astronaut training corps. So it was just a really great experience to create something and then have it to be so well received. Um, Concurrently, while I was doing that work, I also had an awesome job at Pearson where I was working to develop technology solutions within the adult training, the human performance realm for organizations all over the world. And I loved that so much, but I just had this itch, you know, scratching at me. I had this kind of entrepreneurial bug, but likewise, I just really wanted to take that, the skills and expertise that I had gained over, you know, almost a decade and apply it into a completely different field because I just, I love being challenged. (laughs) I love doing something completely new every couple of years. Um, So yeah, I went off and uh, started a custom fabrication business with my husband and partner in crime. And it's just 
incredibly fun. You know, it never feels like work to me, although we work super, super hard, literally like blood, sweat, and tears, right? But, um, you know, and even at that, as I mentioned, I love tackling new things. So I wanted to kind of dip my toes back into the waters of human performance and adult learning, adult training. So hence why I launched my website, katehickson.com. I also have a podcast coming soon, which I'm really excited about. Uh, so essentially right now I'm just focusing on how to level up your life. So I'm using research backed strategies, uh, interviews with extraordinary people to unlock the secrets of what makes the extraordinary tick. Wow, that's a really fascinating background, Kate. I love your focus on the extraordinary. And since our audience is largely made up of uh, nursing professionals across mm -hmm. the emergency spectrum, who I would argue are all extraordinary. Absolutely. We are just so excited to delve more into this with you. I would love to know from you, Kate, what is your goal for this podcast? Um, like, what are you looking to get out of this podcast today? Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I just have such tremendous respect for emergency nurses. I uh, had several family members over the years who needed the services of flight nurses, transport nurses, trauma nurses, and uh, these men and women just literally saved the lives of people that I love, that I care so deeply about. So, you know, first and foremost, I just want to show such tremendous gratitude towards this profession and to these folks. So thank you. Thank you all so very much. Your work is so important. And you know, because I'm so grateful <laughs> towards these people, I'd also love to just impart one little nugget, one little, you know, tool, one tip. If I can, if I can help them, if I can help you at all, then I mean, gosh, like you all have made my day, you've made my month. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, so thinking about this group of professionals in uh, emergency trauma, transport, nursing, and beyond, what lessons about team-based training or operating at a high performance do you think are most relevant for this group? Mm, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I guess if you think about it, um, emergency nurses are working within teams all day, all night. <laughs> you know, from the pilot flying uh, the helicopter to the surgeon in the emergency department. You know, there's all sorts of different people that you have to work alongside every single day. Likewise, these teams have to be exceptionally high performing because the work is so demanding, it's so stressful, it's so dangerous with incredibly high stakes. I mean, we're talking about people's lives <laughs> after all. Indeed. So when you think about team-based training, it's really just about gaining expert skills in teamwork processes. So what are some of these skills? It's things like uh, group problem solving or consensus building, conflict management, you know, amongst others, of course. But, but all these things really just boil down to interpersonal skills. So for emergency nurses, I think about communication skills and how just truly paramount they are. So when you look at the certification programs offered by the BCEN, there's a great deal of emphasis on those communication skills. So you, know, you think about uh, radio operations for uh, certified transport nurses or intake procedures for certified pediatric emergency nurses. Each program recognizes how vital communication skills are. And I just think it's so cool that by being certified, you're essentially telling the world that you excel at communicating, which is indispensable to effective teams, especially high performing ones. So you know, hats off to the BCEN and, and all the emergency nurses. It's really, really cool stuff. Yeah, thank you for that. I, I do love this, you know, the lessons we can learn about team-based um, training and communication. And I think it's very pertinent to our audience. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about um, this crush model that you developed, mm -hmm. um, kind of looking at these extraordinary performers and coming up with this model that, you know, they all seem to have in common. Mm -hmm. And I'd love if you could talk to us a little bit more about that, how you developed it um, and how it applies to these high performers. 
Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So, so the crush method, it's essentially a research back formula for achieving extraordinary goals or, I mean, really just any goal. So I drew upon my work throughout my PhD in developing uh, high performing teams at NASA, as well as all of my research and work to date, you know, so over the last five or 10 years or so. And so in other words, I've just really been like geeking out <laughs> on studying what makes these high performers <laughs> tick. And so for the crush method, each letter of the word crush stands for a different distinct phase of goal achievement. So there's catalyst, resolution, unwavering, stamina, and habit. So by applying this blueprint to your life, you're given a roadmap to leveling up. It's something I'm just super excited and really passionate about, especially because in hard times like these, I think we all could use some positive forward movement. Yeah, I agree. And I, when I was looking at um, Crush, the thing that really, there were two things that intrigued me. Um, the first one was, is, um, that aha moment in the beginning, right? Where you think, oh, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, typically I've always thought those aha moments were big moments, but I think there's a lot of little aha moments that come across our path all the time that um, we may miss because we're too busy doing other things. Absolutely. But they don't always have to be big things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you're absolutely right. And, and to speak to that for a second, I, I've studied that pretty extensively where it's really just about having your eyes open, right? It's about going through life with a curiosity, having that lifelong learner mentality where you're always looking for something new to where, yeah, it might not be an earth shattering idea that you have, you know, it could be a small goal and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, small goals eventually equal really big goals too. Right. And I think that's really important um, with our nurses who make that decision to become certified, right? And Absolutely. to really become, you know, the elite of their profession. And there's that aha moment that says, I believe I could do this. I believe I could achieve this. So I was really intrigued with that first one. Um, and then the, la the second one that I personally kept thinking about was the H of the crush, which was habit. Right. Um, and from a personal aspect, I'm really good at doing bad habits. <laughs> um, Aren't we all? <laughs> I'm really bad at coming up with good habits. Mm. And so I've been thinking about that a lot of, why can't I just switch that equation around mm -hmm. and be good at good habits? But I think habits are really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it all boils down to a mind shift, right? Like none right. of this is insurmountable. You just right. simply have to set your mind to it. As you said, switch around that pattern and suddenly, you know, the world just opens up to you just by viewing things through a different lens. Right. Janie, I don't know if you had a favorite out of the crush model or not. Um, and don't worry, Kate, I'm going to get to your favorite later on. Oh, no, no problem. Yeah, Bridget, I'm with you on the habit. I thought a lot about that one as well, because it is so easy to just do your bad habits. And when you're trying, like I'm trying right now in my life to change to some good habits um, with some personal things, and uh, it, you really do have to be quite thoughtful about it. And so I like this crush model. Um, and and I'm, I'm thinking about how to better apply that to my own um, changes and habits that I'm trying to make um, myself. So I, I, too, really got hung up on the, on the habit one quite yeah. a bit because it's just so easy to either start a, a new good habit and then fall right back into your old one. Right. Uh, I think this crush model really does give us the blueprint Kate talked about for how can we turn that bad habit into the good one that we so need to do to achieve that extraordinary lifestyle or, or accomplishment that we are looking for. Right. And the other thing I love about this model is um, it really applies 
to anyone who decides I want to become certified, right? You can use every single one of those things to kind of map out how am I going to get there? And right. so I, I just love it. Um, and I'm so it, happy to hear that, that, uh, truly makes my heart feel very full today. <laughs> Good. We like full heart hearts. Yeah. Um, so I think Jamie, you had another question. Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, thank you, Bridget. So when we're thinking about, um, being extraordinary and, I know so many nurses across the country and, and actually a little bit internationally too. And I really do see them as extraordinary, but I'm not sure they ever see themselves that way because they think, oh, well, this is just my job. Mm -hmm. um, but, but they are extraordinary at the job that they um, have been called to do. And so not just nurses, but I think also people in other roles I've read a lot, Kate, about this notion of the imposter syndrome, where maybe you are pretty extraordinary and you're really good at your at your job, but you don't see it that way. You think, oh, well, I just got lucky there, or, or yeah. well, yeah, that presentation went pretty well, but, you know, again, that must have been luck. And and uh, it's sometimes I think it's hard for some some of us to recognize that we really are very good at what we're doing maybe even extraordinary mm -hmm. because there's this imposter syndrome thing that's lurking around and we just don't want to let ourselves believe, hey, I am extraordinary or I am really good at that. Have you had any dealings with that kind of, of uh, thought process? Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, almost almost on a daily basis. Um, and, and to your point, though, going back to the emergency nurses, I mean, you're absolutely right. They are undoubtedly, unquestionably extraordinary men and women. Um, but so, you know, when I, when you think about it, for so many people, there is something holding them back. You know, it could be imposter syndrome, as you were mentioning, it could be fear, it could be, you know, some other negative force that's at play. And so what I've learned through my research and through my work is that essentially we just have to channel that anxiety or channel that fear into a source of fuel. So we just have to flip it on its head. So rather than just succumbing <laughs> to toxic thoughts or toxic fears, we just have to overcome it. But so, you know, how do you, how do you actually do that? Because it sounds so simple, but it's, it's definitely not. So one way to do this is to just simply arm yourself with as much knowledge and experience as you possibly can. So you have to cultivate all those necessary skills all that expertise along the way so that when it comes time to step up and perform or you know tackle another goal when it comes time to crush it you then have full confidence in your abilities you know without a shadow of doubt that you are fully prepared and you belong there and you can own that moment and so that's why lifelong learning constant skill refreshment is so tremendously important because when you get rusty or when you start to doubt your abilities, that's when you let fear or imposter syndrome overtake you. You don't move forward in your life because you're just lacking confidence in yourself. But instead, by just constantly adding to your toolkit, you then get that unshakable belief in yourself. And that's when you can make incredible things happen in your life. Wow, I really love that, Kate, and that is so applicable to our audience because they are lifelong learners, um, and many of them have achieved board certification, uh, and they do have to prepare quite rigorously for that, mm -hmm. and I remember back in 1996 when I first achieved my certified emergency nurse credential when I was working in the emergency department, um, I felt so much more confident and unshakable in, in my knowledge. Now, I, I'm never going to know everything. Right. I'm always learning, but boy, exactly. that sure did give me a confidence boost. And I felt a lot like, a lot less like that imposter. Like I, it was just my dream job. And I just, I just pinched myself every day mm. to go to work. Like, am I really going to go get to work in the emergency department? This is so wow. cool. Um, and so I can so relate to that. And I'm sure our audience can too, just arming yourself with that knowledge and pushing through uh, does give you um, a lot more confidence uh, and it helps you helps you face some of those uh, imposter syndromes or fears. I think, I think that is great advice. Mm, love, it. It, love it. It really is. And um, I think that was 
one of the best ways we could start to wind down this podcast is <laughs> something so um, motivating. So, Kate, thank you for that answer. That was perfect. Um, so now it's time for what we do in our podcast is what we call rapid fire questions, Kate. Oh boy. And I just have a couple. They're pretty easy. Um, but the first one is, which I have to ask, is what was the coolest thing about studying astronauts? Mm. And did you get to wear um, one of the uh, uniforms? <laughs> you know, I actually was able to try on a spacesuit, which was really cool. <laughs> Um, gosh, you know, th there was so much, there was so much that was just undeniably amazing about it. But, you know, I guess on like a personal level, <laughs> so around 4 p.m. or so every Friday, you could go to this little hole in the wall bar near the entrance or the exit of uh, Johnson Space Center. You know, they're serving beers and little plastic cups and you're eating popcorn out of the little tiny, you know, paper dish. Yeah. And it is just filled with astronauts or you know the the chief of the international space station or you know the engineer who's working on the lunar rover you know and all these folks are just hanging out you know yeah. having a beer or two after a long work week and you know just to be able to kind of shoot the breeze on a more intimate level more personal level with with people of that caliber and that that lifestyle that you know work was just so, so, so neat. So I'll, I'll never forget those days, certainly. <laughs> that sounds actually like a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> it, was. it was. So switching gears a little bit, what was your biggest lesson you've learned um, from your daughter? Mm, wow. Um, so it took me a very long time to conceive. I uh, had some health issues and, and things and it, it was just a very, very long journey for me. So then when I was finally able to get pregnant and gave birth to a healthy, you know, beautiful baby girl, I was just filled with such indescribable gratitude. And I felt that every day since, you know, and it's, it just made me view my life through a lens of gratitude to where now, you know, every day that I'm able to spend time with her, I'm so grateful, I'm so appreciative. And that's permeated throughout my entire worldview. And it's just truly made me a better, you know, more humble, more grateful person overall. That's an amazing lesson. Um, so I told you we'd get to this part, but what was your favorite part of the um, crush model? Ah, yes. So I, you know, I could, I could talk probably at length, you know, about the different phases, the different letters, but you know, I think a big takeaway for me is just simply like, I've had to practice what I preach. You know, this right. was never about me. Like I, I just genuinely am fascinated by people who, who can achieve great things and, you know, take on these big goals and, you know, do something positive for it in their life. And I just, I just wanted to study that, right? <laughs> like again, it wasn't ever about me, but because I study it, because I talk about it, because I write about it, because I, you know, just constantly thinking about this, it's made me then approach my life differently to where, you know, when I'm having a really bad day or I don't feel well, or I'm nervous about something or whatever it might be, I'm able to then draw upon the crush method and apply it myself. And so I've noticed a big positive change in my own life just since I've started working on this, which is really an unexpected, but really cool outcome. That's very, that's very cool too. And I think the last one is what's your favorite book on leadership? Mm, gosh. Um, so I was recently reading a book by Edgar Schein, Peter Schein, I believe is how you pronounce their last name. I think it's a father son uh, relationship. And so their book was called something to the effect of humble leadership. Oh. So yeah. And, and what I loved about this was that it really just focuses on relationships right. and trust within leadership. And it, it kind of, it's a different uh, philosophy on leadership because it doesn't like put leaders on a pedestal, you know, so many books, so many theories, philosophies about leadership. It's all about the person, the leader, you know, right. the, the sage on the stage, if you will. Whereas this particular book is all about 
you know, drawing people together and working within those teams. And again, like cultivating relationships and leading more naturally. And of course, with, you know, my background in studying team-based training and teamwork training, this book just really resonated with me. So I highly recommend it. <laughs> and what was the name again? Uh, Humble Leadership. I'm gonna put that on my list. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the end of the rapid fire question. Jamie, anything from you? Uh, yes, Kate, I have so enjoyed talking with you today and I feel so inspired by your, um, by your teachings and your messages. And I am sure that our audience is feeling the same way. And I'm wondering about if our audience would like to follow you and get more of this great stuff, where can they find you online or, or on social media? Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. So on um, Instagram and Twitter, my handle is the same. So it's at Kate Hickson, PhD. So K-A-T-E-H-I-X-S-O-N, PhD. Uh, and then my website, katehickson.com. And as mentioned, I'm uh, about to launch a podcast of my own called Dauntless, where I'm uh, sharing insights from some of the world's preeminent overachievers. So I've really excited to uh, get out there in the community and I would just love to interact with and meet, you know, any of the fine folks that are associated with the BCEN because you all are truly, truly amazing. Oh, thank you so much. I love the name of that podcast, Dauntless. That just mm -hmm. sounds like something you definitely want to listen to. I am, um, I look forward to, to hearing that myself. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah, me too. Um, and I also want to take this moment um, to thank you um, for joining us on this episode of BCN and Friends. Kate, thank you so much. And we hope um, to our listeners that you'll continue to tune in as we move forward with this series and bring you fresh and impactful content and perspectives. And if you have a suggestion for one of our episode topics, please, please email us at BCEN at bcen.org. I'm Bridget Flood, here with Jamie Shoemaker, and on behalf of the entire BCN team, we thank you, we celebrate you, for all that you are doing as professional nurses across these, this emergency spectrum. And until next time. <laughs>